someone has to tell people. Someone has to share truth. Someone has to understand the truth. And we have to understand from a, a worldview that God is the creator of all things. He is the king of kings, Lord of lords. He, he, he is the king. He created everything. And we are all going to die. And we're all going to stand before him one day. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and prove what God's will is what? His good, pleasing and perfect will. There's a better way if you just understand it. No one's trying to hurt you. No one's trying to condemn you, but there is a better way to live. The one that made you has designed it. King James Version says, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor, I mean, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revel, revelers, extortion. This is what King James, this is why I don't read King James. It's just <laughs> effeminate. <laughs> shall inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were like that, you were, but you were washed, you're sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fornicators. So the Bible says, warning you, that if you're living together outside of marriage, it's not in God's will. It's not good, and God says this is how life's supposed to be lived. And so we need to understand that. But if you're going to be politically correct, you don't get into any of this stuff. Most churches don't get into this stuff. Only 3% of pastors before the election would even bring up gender fluidity, the gender issue, abortion issue, talking about life as it should be. Only 3% of the pastors said anything about it. You know why? Because they don't want to lose people in their church. Did the people hire them? Or were they called by Almighty God to share truth that can set people free? I mean, absolutely. People, do, people don't hire them. You know what? The Bible says that leaders will stand before God with a more heavy judgment based on what they said. Only 3%. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, it is actually reported, and this is Paul speaking, that sexual immorality among you, and of a kind that even pagans do not tolerate. A man is sleeping with his father's wife, and you are proud of it. Your boasting's not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole bunch? Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be new, unleavened batch. Meaning, get the corruption out. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. And this is how sin works. You say yes to it once, you'll say yes to it twice. I'm in control. You find it's easier and easier, and pretty soon you're sliding downhill, and you need help. You're going to find yourself someplace you never thought you'd be, right? Do you remember last week I said, who have you given permission to to speak into your life? Can you name the person that you would receive correction? Because the only escape out of this process of disloyalty, remember? The whole eight steps of disloyalty. How does it end? The rebels always die, right? How does that stop? Remember, how does it, pro we said last week, What? Someone has to speak into that person's life. They have a choice to receive that truth or reject it, but the only way out is truth. The only way out is truth. And in the world is going to get hungry, friend. They're tired. They're already, I mean, they're so thirsty, they're looking for answers right now. And when they get hungry and look for answers, where are they going to turn? If the church sounds like the world... They're going to find a polluted stream of nothingness. And they're going to say religion's nothing. It means nothing. God's nothing. God's not real. When what they want to see, they need to see is the reality of God, the spirit of God, signs and wonders of God. They need to intersect with the spirit of God and find truth and find deliverance and find life. But the church is playing the same game the world is. Trying to be culturally relevant So who is speaking into the nation? Who is speaking into our children's lives? We just had our homeschool graduation, which I'm so proud of, those parents that said, you know what, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I'm not letting my little 
my little five-year-old, my little six-year-old be indoctrinated to call this stuff normal? Because if you wear that stained t-shirt long enough, it'll become normal to you. It'll become normal to you. This is normal. Someone has to stand up and protect this generation. It has always been the church. The church is the salt of the earth. The church is the light of the world. Jesus Christ shining through us. If the light grows dim, what hope is there? If the salt loses its saltiness, what hope is there left? The enemy doesn't care if you join here in church tonight. He doesn't care. He could care less. He could care less his building's here. He could care less you're here. But what he does not want you to do is to embrace the word of God and begin to make an impact out there. Changing the culture. Standing up for righteousness. Church attendance, as you probably have guessed, is falling. And of course, COVID didn't help. 65% of Americans do not attend church. I mean, I'm not counting Easter and Christmas. They don't attend church. And when I say attend church, you know, we have to count the once a month people. You know, I mean, and then you have to consider that a lot of churches are just religious exercises. I mean, I probably wouldn't want to go there either. <laughs> this is why we show videos almost every single week that people come to these doors will see the reality of the kingdom of God. This is my passion. That they will see the kingdom and know that the kingdom is alive and well and the same things they saw Jesus do in the Bible are happening today. They'll find that same power available to them to deliver them, set them on God's path and live the good life, which is our saying, living the good life. People all want to live the good life. And this is what the church needs today is a revival. It needs a revival of the spirit of God to bring the courage of God into our lives that we could speak up. See, you don't know the person you speak to in the world maybe crying out for help, looking for answers. Who has the answer? You do. You do. You know, we're going to look back on this day someday. We're going to look back on last year someday, you know. We're going to look back and we're going to say, maybe I wish I would have done more. I wish I would have spoken out. I wish I would have, right? Because this thing's not stopping. You know, one thing about the enemy I've learned a long time ago, you can't compromise with him. You give an inch, he's not after an inch. Give him a foot, he's not after a foot. He's after the entire thing. He's after your life. There's no compromise. And until you declare your freedom, until you draw the line and say, no, I'm done with that, you won't be free and you'll never experience the power of God to the degree you can and could have. But your life is going, it's moving, and we need to make a decision that we are going to be God's people in this generation. I don't think it's an accident you're here. I don't think it's an accident you're born in this season, at this time, in this, this place. You know, God has you here for a reason. You are the voice of God in this generation. And if you refuse to take that stand, you'll reap the same corruption this generation is reaping. Your lives will look just like the ones they live. A mess. But that's not your future, you see. That's not what God has for you. You can live the good life, but you just have to be willing to let the Spirit of God speak to you. This generation needs God. My intent as your pastor and my passion is to help people understand the kingdom because it changed our life so drastically.